I know for you, Arturo, because you also directed it with mm -hmm. Aviva, you co-directed mm -hmm. it. Um, can you speak a bit about how it changed or morphed? Did it did it change a lot on set, or did you really follow sort of the script and and? It changed a, a, a little bit, a little bit. Mostly, um, we tried to find where there was in the play. There's a lot of exposition. There's the characters that come and. For example, one comes from rehearsal and explains what happened in rehearsal and how he got in trouble with his director. So every time in the screen, in the play, there would be a situation like that, we would assess it and be like, can this be cut or can it be shown instead of told? So if it was too expensive, we would try to find a way to cut it. And um, if it was possible, then instead of telling it at the table, we would recreate that scene. Mm. So um, that was kind of like the approach and we ended up recreating three scenes that have other characters that are not in the play that they talked about in the play only. Right. This became real so we didn't need the guy telling this just happened to me. We actually saw that that happened to him. Mm -hmm. So it becomes more um, energetic, more dynamic as opposed to retelling. Yeah, showing and not show, telling. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. And Susan, I'm curious as well, because I know you work on Mozart in the Jungle, which the concept of that show is based on a book. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm curious, um, in terms of episodic, how much do you, episode to episode, go back to that source material? Or is it just that the, the concept is based on that and then the show becomes its own entity? In, in that, that case, the, the book was uh, distant memory. It was okay. very much as a jumping off point to some of the characters came from there, but it really became its own thing mm -hmm. uh, quite early on. Right. And in terms of some of the other adaptations you've worked on, say with um, Anne, for, Anne of Green Gables, um, how closely did you work with the source material there? Or what was that process like? Because that's also mm -hmm. quite a, um, mm -hmm. you know, a book we all have, uh, most of us have a relationship mm -hmm. to. So what was that process like? Well, you know, I read somewhere, um, Emma Thompson talking about her her, her first adaptation was was um, it wasn't Pride and Prejudice it was this Sense and Sensibility right and she said I just decided to put everything in there and then I then I started taking it out huh. which is one way to go about it <laughs> right and it's not a bad way because in a, in a sense you don't really know and it's it's one way of really getting to know the material as you're dramatizing it and thinking what is that scene and why is that there and how can I how can I does it need to be there? Is that the story I'm telling? So I think in a way I did that with the Anne movies uh, and then it started to evolve. It started to show you what it needed to be and we invented things and this, you know, it's, it's it, it, in, a, in a classic you really need to respect hmm. the book because people love that book and they want to come and have that experience of it and, and you want to, it's interpretive the way being an actor is, you know, you want to bring your best version of what that book is to life and mm -hmm. still have, you know, a modern sensibility. So we thought a lot about the language and how to make it feel very, like you weren't jarred by it feeling too modern, but at the same time it didn't feel antique. Mm -hmm. That's another mm -hmm. challenge when you're adapting a, 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 the same problem with the Dickens movie. It was trying to make it feel fun and Victorian, but also not something too fusty or too mm -hmm. precious that way. So mm -hmm. it's, Different kinds of challenges. Right. I think you know. I think that you, the two key words here are that you said are, it's source material. Is the book or the play or is a source material to then create something new, something mm -hmm. different, or you know that's inspired by that. And you know, I mean, people are often so upset, or they expect authors to be upset when the movie or the TV show differs from from the written pro, the written book. But I think that you know that the a director's obligation is to produce the best movie or TV show they can, not just make the author happy. Hmm. That that's really the, is the goal. I mean, there's a fabulous thriller writer named Harlan Coben, and he has this wonderful discussion about how Hollywood and, and books and so forth, and he describes the process as you take your book and you throw this thing over a wall, <laughs> yeah. and on the other side of the wall are the producers, and they attach a check to a rock. <laughs> and they, <laughs> And they throw it over the wall, and you get that, and you both walk your separate ways. And he said, that's pretty much is the process. And, and I think a lot of authors, if they're not too full of themselves, are kind of okay with that. 
because there's another another great crime writer a guy named Mark Billingham who I really love his stuff and and Mark you know people say well the TV show wasn't like the book and they ruined the book he said no they didn't ruin the book the book still exists <laughs> right. you can still read the book right yeah. and yeah. it's there so yeah. if it's the movies or TV shows different it's, that's we can live with that right. Yeah, that's great. That's mm. a cool perspective. And you've had uh, one of your other books was made into a series, and yeah, yeah and that was for, by other screenwriters. Is yeah, that well, I, of course I had to. That, I've, I've uh, my novel The Accident was made into a six-part TV series in France, mm -hmm. and of course um, I, not being particularly adept at the French language, I, nobody asked me to write the screenplay. And of course they changed the setting and they changed the names of the characters and so forth. But the adaptation is fantastic. Mm -hmm. I mean, they followed the story just as I wrote it, and, mm -hmm. and they did a beautiful job on it. And another one of my books has just been optioned for a series over there as well. And they did a really nice job mm -hmm. of it. And, and uh, so I'm very happy with it. I, it's, I, there wasn't anything I could do with it except go over there and watch them film it for a couple of days. Right. And, and, uh, mm -hmm. and it was really well done. So I was I was pleased. So I mean I'm sure there's lots of you know that's not necessarily the the uh, the rule. You know a lot of authors are just really unhappy with what happens to their books. But this was a this was a good experience. Right. Yeah, that's good to hear. Um, and how does it differ? I know Susan, you've written um, other narrative work that isn't adapted from specifically another source piece of source material. I know Slings and Arrows came from an experience or came from. Um, the source material, I suppose, of a, of a small town Shakespeare festival and your experience there. But um, how does your process differ in terms of, you know, how you approach writing something that isn't an adaptation? Do you still work from an outline and do the same sort of if I, steps? If it's not an adaptation? Yeah. Do you find it a, a very different process or mm -hmm. just a, a slightly different process? It's slightly different in that, again, I get, and this, I think, comes from being an actor, too. Mm. You know, as an actor, you, um, in order to play a character, you need to know whatever you need to know about that character, whatever you decide you need to know, whether it's something about the history or the setting or just to live inside that character. And it's the same with writing. As I say, the adaptation, I find myself doing, I'm doing one right now set in 1950 in England, and I'm completely immersed in films from that period and from books and uh, because you just want to live in the world to, in order to write it mm -hmm. from the inside. Right. You, know, you want to take the book and have it feel like it's your own story. So in a way they're quite similar in the end. You have to bring characters to life from the inside. You have to understand how they work and how they look at the world. And So it, it's similar in, in a lot of ways. Yeah, I mean, what I hear in that too is a sort of sense that all writing, in some respects, is an adaptation of something, mm. whether that's a, a sort of an event or an experience, or mm -hmm. um, there is an, something from life and making it right. now become mm. a story. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that 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 resonates with me. I guess.